there was an appraisal gap of $35,000. How much? $35,000. Oh, wow. So, I mean, so I definitely need to know so the, the tax it rate like if it changes. The it? Ratio. At this price point with $313 a month in HOA, the back ratio on this is 52. The front ratio is 48. I bet you if we got that back ratio under 52, I bet you it would take it. Let me take the HOA out just to see. If they didn't have that HOA, that drops the payment. The front is still 46, but let's see if it'll take it. Oh, I have the tax information. What Simpson did he say? copied me on a message to, I think, his manager to define what the actual tax rate is. Because when I asked him, I mean, he's the on-site agent, and he said that it was 0.56. Will that change anything if it's 0.56 versus the 1.05? Well, I'm, I'm running it at 0.588, which is what Union County is yeah, showing that's right, right. right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm running it with county only taxes. If this turns out to be city taxes as well, then it's no it hard enough. Okay, yeah. so I closed on Veronica Springs, which is like sort of down the road from there. Right. Let me see what they have for their taxes. And was that new construction as well? It was new construction as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see, without the HOA, I get it approved at this price point for him. Okay, so I have city town taxes. It's city and county. If it's city and county for this neighborhood as well, you're going to be looking at 1.091, which is... I'm going to send this to you. Because you know, last time I looked at it weird. One yeah, number is like what I found. I'll send you what I found on um, the county website as well. Hold on. Are you in front of your computer? I am. So look at the link that I just sent you. So they could technically go up to that 420 amount. They just can't have a crazy... You know, it's the HOA. They can't have, right. They, they, the taxes and any HOA is what's going to really have a huge impact on this price point for them. And again, I'm running this at 5% to so 3.5% to keep that, that ratio down. So did you see the estimate that I, or the link that I just sent you? And this is the problem. Like they have like ranch homes for 389 in Charlotte. Right. And it's only 1708 square feet, which is good for one client, but... It won't work right. for them. If the HOA wasn't that high. If the HOA wasn't that high and he is in county only, then at 420, it would work with 5% down. Most of these homes are going to have some sort of HOA at this high price point. Unless he's further out in the country and he's not in an actual neighborhood, mm -hmm. you know, most of these homes are going to have HOA dues. What about 190 a quarter at 406? at 406 are the property taxes county and city or just county county and city nope too high and there's an emerson it has five bedrooms and it's like 100 square feet more than the lgi house and their hoa is a little bit less yeah it's just the higher he goes in that price point because we have to count both city and county and mm -hmm. because it's new construction they're going to start with his purchase price, unlike an existing home, where mm. normally you could go out and fi find a four hundred and six thousand dollar home, and your taxes are not going to run you, you know, forty four hundred forty four hundred dollars a year. But because it's new construction, the attorneys are going to charge the proposed tax estimate for 2022 based on the full price, which we all know that when the county goes out there, it is rare that they appraise the tax assessment at the price of the home. But since the attorney doesn't have anything to go off of, they have to use the full per, uh, price. So new construction will always show higher taxes until that very first tax bill comes out with the improvements already considered in the assessment. So when you gave us the number last night of like 395, uh -huh. was that including any HOA? Uh, was HOA I, did not, it, I did not include HOA. Okay. Is there a neighborhood out there that is not both city and county? Is there a neighborhood that is not city and county? Yeah, that the taxes are only are county only taxes. I think I might have to go a little bit deeper. Even though I felt like this was pretty deep in there. Let me see right. if Cottage Green is city county. Okay, so this house was to so when you said you're going to look it up on the census tract, do you need that census tract number by any chance and that would help? It would help if we were going to go USDA. 
Okay. Because remember, you were saying that that one neighborhood, a portion of it's eligible and a portion of it's not. The census tract, we could plug the census tract into the USDA underwriting system, and that would tell us whether that particular property is eligible or not. Is it the, but that, the that really thing? only applies if we're worried about whether the home is eligible for USDA. Because I went to the USDA website and I tried to type in the census tract. It's it's 210.5. And I've never done a search like that before. Veronica Springs, they're only releasing four houses a month. And so you have to be on a wait list. So there's like a wait list for March and April's releases. And is that only county? Dude didn't answer me. Oh. Yeah, if it's attached to a city, then it's probably going to be both city and county. This is like so stressful. So we, we definitely need to be at that lower price point for sure. Yeah. And all these builders don't put their stuff online. I have to like reach out to each one. Well, I've found that a lot of the on-site agents don't know enough about their own neighborhood to be able to answer some of these questions. Well, yeah, I'm finding that out right now. You know, <laughs> like these on-site agents, they need to know, is it county only? Is it county and city? Do they cover the transfer taxes? What What do they charge for survey? What so do they, you know... did say that if you use their preferred lender, then it's covered. Right, but there are clients that don't go with their preferred lender and there are some builders that still pick up like david weekly homes when i was working with them mm -hmm. david weekly homes picked up transfer taxes for their clients regardless of whether they used me or not and each builder makes the business decision but when you ask these on-site agents these questions you know they may know the capital contribution but they should know they should be able to tell their home buyer when they sit down they should be able to tell their home buyer yeah you're going to need to um you're going to be responsible for transfer taxes and you need to be prepared for fifteen hundred dollars in capital contribution and there's a setup fee of 125 dollars and they're going to collect the first quarter taxes or the full year ta or i'm sorry the first quarter assessment or the full year assessment like those are questions that i think that as an on-site agent to be thorough and upfront in the interest of full disclosure those are conversations that they need to have with the client before that client goes under contract. Yeah, because I told them, I was like, I don't want them to waste anybody's time and go under contract and it doesn't work out. Like I had to get them fully approved before we go that route. Yeah, I think they're gonna need to scale it back especially if we're going to look at a neighborhood that's going to be both city and county. But they're pretty flexible from what you said, right, and where they want to be. Yeah, they're out in, they were out in Salisbury a second ago. It's Ardell County and then all the way over to Union County. That's like a 45-minute drive. Are they willing to consider existing homes? They are. They are. They're, they're willing to do existing homes. Because if there's an existing home at 406... Chances are, you know, the taxes are going to be considerably lower than $369 a month. And they may be able to qualify for an existing home at a higher price point. It's difficult, right? Yeah. And I'm just going to take this all back to 3.5% down. And that way, when they find the next home, then I can tweak it as necessary. I... But they've got such a big family. I mean, I get why they need this much house, you know? This is, I mean, this just should not be... It should not be an issue, but it is today. Literally, I'm talking to like a whole bunch of agents online. <laughs> it's like multitasking. I need to rename them all so I can. Okay, so what do you know about Stanley County? Taxes? Yeah, they're not on my list because I don't typically work Stanley County, so I don't even research it. Let me see what pops up. Because it's 0.78 acres. And this is 359.9 and no HOA. And it's 300 square feet bigger. Matthew. Matthew's my Stanley contact. Stanley County see. Real Estate Tax Rates. Matt, Matt, Let's Matt. see what this looks like. All right. And when did this post? This one would work. All right. What's the value of the house? 
I mean, it's listed at three fifty nine nine. It's also new construction, but it's it's within a neighborhood with no HOA. So that's showing. All right. So three, let's do three sixty. The Stanley County estimator is estimated on property value of three sixty twenty eight oh eight a year. Divide that by twelve. That's two hundred and thirty four dollars. No HOA. And you said Stanley County, like they're point something. Well, Stanley County actually has a calculator where you just plug oh, it in. Oh, they fancy. I think that's they better fancy. than the I hope this is still there. Great room, concrete patio. Oh my, it's it's literally tilted. I think I have a walk. It looks like. It looks like Stanley County is showing 0.78 plus 0.03. So 0.81 is what it looks like. Let me do, let me do. That's lower than gas Times 0.81% percent by that by 12, 243, pretty close. Yeah. So looks like it's probably 0.81. Okay. Is that? So, I mean, this, that would, that would work for the, for the program for them. If they wanted to go with something like that, Stanley that County. Is that 5% or 3% down? I ran it at three, three and a half. Okay. I don't want to tell them that it's available until he gets back to me. It's online as available. And let me plug in, update the estimated amount that they need. Hasn't sold. Let me check if it's, oh yes. Come on. Keep on checking. Keep on checking. All right. So this new construction. So I'm going to leave all that in there. I'm going to leave all that in there. Update the title work, 37.88 for owner's policy, the lender policy, 7.98 and 6.92 cents. I'm going to assume that they will be paying for transfer taxes. This does not have an HOA, so I can right. get rid of the HOA capital contribution. Um, my guess is that they will probably charge some type of a survey so what maybe 300 for a survey maybe yeah now with this option if we pursued down payment assistance let me see and this builder will allow that too it's like they'll they'll be able to do it no we don't want to do that because that increases his rate we don't go we don't want to go that route what if i add the mcc credit of borrower MCC credit. No, that still doesn't get his ratio down at 43. I was hoping that it would allow us to add the MCC tax credit to get, but that's not going to work. All right, so down payment assistance, they make too much money for that program at this price point. But he, they can still only, get it. They'd have to just put more money down. They'd um, have to put more money down. On 360, if they did 5%, well, they wouldn't be, yeah. See, even if they did 5% on 360, the rate on that today is 5%. So down payment assistance won't be an option, but at least at 360, we could go straight FHA with three and a half percent down and they would qualify. I was just trying to find a way to minimize some of their, you know, their costs. But yeah, I mean, that house, if they like it, we could make that house work for them. Oh, they're accepting offers until 5 p.m. on Saturday. What happened to builders just being able to say, you know what, first come, first serve, first offer? Because what happens is they're going to go in there. Well, they lowered the price. That that's what happened. It was three sixty, and they lowered it by four hundred dollars. Yeah. So now they're going to get. It's going to get into a bidding war. It's probably going to go at like three seventy, three eighty, and unless they have comps in the neighborhood to support it. So closed homes. This one's listed at three fifty nine nine. Can you run them, so lot number three, a Jasper, 2640 square feet. This is four bedrooms, and the other one is a little bit larger. How do they look, were they or how do they look at 367? They'll look fine at 367. So they've got wiggle room to, to go higher. Okay, and because at you're not using any down payment assistance, you can technically, how quickly can you close it? As quickly as we can get an appraisal back, a few weeks. So I'm asking him, um, is it 100% complete? How quickly do you want the buyer to close? And what would make the offer awesome? He's probably getting that, that text and he's probably like laughing. Oh no, this is, uh, like I've sold, like I was the highest selling person with True Homes. That's why I only talked to the manager. 
<laughs> I was like, right. I don't, I don't want to talk to all the other people. Even though, you know, the other guy was the manager too and he screwed me over. But so looking at history, lot number five was 344.9 and it sold for 355. Five. So see, three fifty. Unless they've got a couple more closing. Oh, there's a different model. I'm just looking at everything that sold oh, in okay. Grandview. So the Anderson number four sold at price. The other one is it closed at five thousand over. So we have those two. And this was a 1995 house. Oh, that's Granite Falls. Okay. Well, how much was the LGI house? Wasn't it three? I wasn't it like 389 something like that? No, it was 360 something because they were going to increase the price to 372 and it pissed me off. When he submitted it to me, he submitted it at a price of, drum roll please, 390. <laughs> Bless his heart, no. The house was 357,900. It's almost yeah. finished. So it has a March 4th closing date. Oh, I lost my calendar. Well, what's worst case scenario on date for March? I mean, if we can get them into this house in Stanley County, I say let's knock it out and get them closed in March. Like what date would work for you? Like a completely realistic, basically almost worst case scenario date. If, if he wants to pay for a rush appraisal, I say make it a three week close. Because, I mean, we pretty much have everything else. Mm hmm. So in between now and the middle of March, we have Ash Wednesday. St. Patrick's Day and Holly, H O L I, Holy. Do you have you seen any like situations in the past where those holidays cause delays? No, because the only time it would create a delay is if there's a federal holiday. I mean, the only you know religious holidays don't don't shut the government down. All right, let me. Can you send me an approval letter, Stanley, comma North Carolina? Do you want me to drop it? Because you should have the one at 390. Do you want me to drop the price? Oh, no. No, keep it at 390. That's perfect. Yep, you should have that in your inbox. Okay, I'll call you back. Let me call them. All right. Thank okay, you so sounds much. Good. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Hey. Hey, how are you? I'm good. What's going on? Man, I am trying to find my clients a house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, crazy, I, right? I did not get sleep last night because oh, of this situation. Yeah. They were under contract before, oh, no. and the builder canceled the contract. No way. Why? Because it's twofold. So one reason was because there was an appraisal gap of $35,000. Uh, how much? 35000 Oh, wow. So, I mean, uh, you know, I've ran into appraisal gaps before where it was like within reason. Yeah. But they haven't sold a house in the neighborhood since November. So uh, it's a legit gap. It's like yeah. a, a hopeful wish, throw in a yeah. dart type of thing. Like I can prepare them for this, but I'm looking at like there's a Jasper that's sold. There's a, you know, that's larger and it's sold within reason. So I feel like I'm fine there yeah. at the yeah. neighborhood. I looked it up already and this is a 0.78 versus the 0.5 of the Jasper. Jasper, so I'm confident, but I'll talk them through this if they answer their questions. They're not, are you still using, is it Lindsay at Movement Mortgage? Is that her name? Yeah, there's, so yeah, Lindsay Goins, she's who I use. Because they were so close to closing, they're like fully approved, like all documents in and everything. Who are they with? Um, it's Fairway Mortgage. It's Karen Moravis. She's the branch manager there. Gotcha. Okay. I mean, fully approved. Like, I, yeah. I, I said, when can you close this? I made sure I asked her, and she said she needs three weeks from today. So if the house is ready, if it's not ready, we'd be waiting on you. But she would have everything done in three weeks. Gotcha. Yeah, that, and that's. I think the contract would say, like, we give at least 21 days. You know, you've got. Mm -hmm. we know that you've got to get your stuff together. This thing is about two weeks out from completion. So, yeah, you'd get 21 to 30 days would be fine. You know, so what you could do is, um, Jen Mathis is the on-site agent out. Well, she's, it's, there's no model. There's only six. It's a unique little situation. There's mm -hmm. six lots out there. So she would be writing the contract. So I can send you a template, you yeah. know, email offer form. You know, if, if you did want to, you know, put something in by Saturday at five o'clock, mm -hmm. then you have an opportunity in there just to put, look, you know, I would put, look, you know, fully underwritten. Mm -hmm. You know, this is this thing is locked and loaded. I mean, sometimes I, just... I can have them approved by the on-site person. Like I'll have Lindsay run it, but they can still work with Karen because they ultimately yeah. have that choice. Gotcha. So, um, so, mm -hmm. she, so she is going to be overseeing that community. She'd probably have to write it from a model in Morgan Hills is the new neighborhood in Arbor Mar that she's at. 
which is the models. Linux. I do have, oh, between 10 and 12. I can't do between 10. I have a listing appointment then. The Linux model. Is that the model at your neighborhood? No, the, no. we got the Jasper at Haven. The Linux. Uh, let me see what version of the Linux. Is um, that at, um, at possibly at Kendrick Farms? Are your clients in Charlotte? Yeah, but they are willing to go an hour outside of... Oh, that's good. Yeah, so it's an hour and three minutes. So... <laughs> <laughs> Stretching it, but yeah. hey, you know... There's a Linux at Kelly's Landing in Mount Holly. And do you know if this is like an open, transitional... It's traditional? in our contemporary lifestyle. Contemporary. So it's the same flow as the model at Haven at Rocky River. dining. Uh, so study, dining room, kitchen with the island, and then great room. So I've actually got one in this community under construction on lot, on lot 120. So we were under contract out in Cleveland County, Kings Mountain. So it's like the direct opposite direction. So gotcha. Do they live over that way? No, they live here in Charlotte. Okay, but, so you know, just... obviously everything here is starting at 360. Oh, yeah. I was just wondering which one of these homes, where, like where they're living, if I've got something that's close to where they're staying right now. For this, so we've got one here in Concord that they could come and take a look at. But They, they need to see that lot because it's point. Seven, eight, yeah, eight, they eight. may as well just jump in the car and just drive, you know what I mean? Just drive all the way over there and, and go check out the actual home. At least then they've seen the lot, seen mm -hmm. the yard, seen the house. If they're going to drive, you know, from Charlotte to Concord, it's half an hour. It's just another 35 minutes. Oh, yeah, we'll get this done tomorrow. Like, this is going to be done. So all I need now is to, to reach out to the on-site person there and get the offer template, and then I'll get that over. Well, I can email you the template, or if you want to, or if you want to take them out there and do your thing and if they want to put an offer in, then I'll send it to you. Oh, no, send it to me. They'll put an offer on. Because, I, I, like, the fact that there's no HOA, the taxes are good, the price is good, the size is good, you know. Yeah. And, you know, I have videos of pretty much all of the, the True Homes video. Perfect. So sometimes okay. they want to walk through it. But, I mean, I think this is good. Good. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Thank you so much. You got it. All right. Thank you. Bye. Um, yesterday, I had yet another contract canceled by a builder here in the area and it is literally driving me crazy. They are on my poop list. Like I will never put my clients through this again. This is again like the third time that a contract has been canceled that would not have been canceled with any of the other builders that I've worked with. And I have worked with or under contract with at least 14 builders in this area and none of them treat their clients this way. I have a lot of builder relationships. The lenders that I work with, I work with them because they get the reason or they get my why of being a real estate agent and their passion behind real estate and helping people purchase homes and sell homes aligns with my why. And I feel like because of the market and it being a seller's market, I feel like a lot of sellers and builders are getting to this point where they're just getting greedy and the greed only hurts the consumer. And there's a lot of realtors who have become increasingly lazy and not doing the extra work that is needed to make sure that their clients are not just dangling their money out there. Like an approval letter is amazing. I don't show any properties ever, period without my clients being approved. But when you have clients that are looking in multiple cities, towns, counties, and tax values and HOA, all that stuff starts to play a part in how much they can afford in one area versus another area. Loan type, USDA versus FHA. A lot of that stuff comes into play when you're dealing with all these areas. So as a buyer, you have to make sure that your real estate agent is aware of all the areas that you're looking. They don't just have your money dangling out there because a lot of these deposits are non-refundable. Hire a real estate agent who is tight with his or her team, i.e. me and Karen or Karen and I, so they can communicate and work through it and make sure that they're showing you properties and presenting you properties and situations that you can A, comfortably afford, comfortably close on, and B, meets all of your needs and wants. It's not just being a glorified door opener. There is work 
to this and the past few days has been really nothing but work. I have talked to all of my contacts, but it's not just being a glorified door opener. What I'm gonna do now is try to figure this meeting out with my client. I'm waiting for this particular agent to send me the offer template, which he has already sent me. It's almost 3.30, which means I need to wrap up some things go pick my kiddos up from school, come back home and cook dinner while they are at, come on. I don't know why real estate agents, this, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot harder doing real estate than people make it appear. And there's a lot of emotion in it and a lot of, okay, there's, there's Jen. She's one of our awesome core brokers. We have a client, a core broker with True Homes basically means I've sold property with them. 2019, I sold the most True Homes in the region and I got an award for that. I got my work cut out for me. I always keep track of the tax rates of the areas that I work. I do work five counties. I need to know what's going on. Will neighborhoods be redistricted for schools? Is the tax rate going up or down? How does that affect the affordability combined with the increases and decreases of the interest rate? You gotta know these things. That knowledge is very, very valuable when protecting my clients money. If you are interested in hiring me as your buyer's agent or your listing agent, all of my contact information is below. I hope to hear from you soon. If you want an awesome real estate agent who is literally going to work for you and make sure that your best interests are always kept top of mind, then definitely hire me as your real estate agent because I take this personally. I will talk to you soon. Bye.